Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how NASA and NOAA turn a measured long-term cooling trend in the United States into a warming trend. In 1974, the National Center for Atmospheric Research showed a sharp global cooling trend beginning in the 1940s. They showed that 1970 was cooler than 1900 and was also cooler than 1870. The National Academy of Sciences published a very similar graph showing sharp northern hemisphere cooling after the year 1940. The New York Times reported a unanimous consensus among scientists that the world was cooling. Washington Post, January 11, 1970, Colder Winters Held Dawn of a New Ice Age. Washington Post, July 9, 1971, U.S. scientists sees new ice age coming. The world could be as little as 50 or 60 years away from a disastrous new ice age, a leading atmospheric scientist predicts. Dr. S.I. Rasool of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and Columbia University says that. New York Times, July 18, 1970, U.S. and Soviet press studies of a colder Arctic. The United States and the Soviet Union are mounting large-scale investigations to determine why the Arctic climate is becoming more frigid, why parts of the Arctic sea ice have recently become ominously thicker, and whether the extent of that ice cover contributes to the onset of ice ages. In 1972, 42 top American and European investigators met at Brown University and then sent a letter to President Nixon warning of glacial temperatures in about a century. The March 1st, 1975 cover of Science News featured an image of glaciers plowing through Manhattan. But by 1999, NASA had largely erased the post-1940 global cooling. And NASA's James Hansen, who started the global warming scare before Congress in 1988, was upset that the U.S. temperature record showed cooling, while the altered global temperature graph showed warming. The vast majority of high-quality, long-term temperature data for the world is in the United States, and much of the world has very little or none. An honest scientist would have said, we have lots of good temperature data from the United States and very little for the world, so perhaps there is something wrong with our global temperature graph. But NASA's James Hansen did the exact opposite. Instead of trying to correct the global temperature graph, he altered the high-quality U.S. temperature graph to change a long-term cooling trend into a warming trend. Now I'm going to show you how this data tampering was done. The United States Historical Climatology Network consists of 1,218 stations spread fairly evenly around the United States. It is by far the highest quality temperature data set covering a large area in the world. That data set shows a sharp cooling trend in daily maximum temperatures over the last century in the United States. It shows that U.S. afternoon temperatures have cooled by more than one degree since the 1930s. But the official U.S. maximum temperature graph from NOAA shows warming during that same time period. After they alter the temperatures, they show about two degrees warming since 1980. But this warming does not exist in their own thermometer data. This graph shows in purple the measured maximum temperature trend in the United States, and in red is shown the altered data which is released to the public. By tampering with the data, they turn this long-term cooling trend into a warming trend. Via their data tampering, temperatures prior to 1960 are cooled about 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit, and recent temperatures are warmed by about 1 degree Fahrenheit. A small part of their adjustment is due to the time of observation bias, which is shown in green. The small time of observation bias adjustment has some theoretical basis to it, but it largely disappears after the year 2000. The full adjustment is much larger than that, and it is very poorly documented. Now I'm going to show you how they create this huge final adjustment. This graph shows the number of thermometers in the United States Historical Climatology Network reporting temperatures each year over the last century. The number of reporting stations peaked in 1989 and has dropped off sharply since then. 
But in the final adjusted data set, they show temperatures for all 1,218 stations, whether they actually reported thermometer data or not during the year. If a station doesn't report temperatures in 2023, NOAA will fabricate temperature data for that station. Less than 10% of the data in 1980 was fabricated, but now that number is close to 50%. Almost half of the temperature data in the final adjusted data set is fake. This graph shows the temperature trend for the fake fabricated data in NOAA's final adjusted temperatures. NOAA has created a rapid warming trend since 1980 by simply making up data for stations which aren't reporting. The vast majority of their final adjustment is due to fake data which they fabricated. This warming trend created by NOAA is purely fictional. And then they use their fake altered data and propagate it into other climate measurements. The NOAA Climate Extremes Index shows that the area of the United States experiencing unusually hot summer afternoon temperatures has greatly increased over the last 40 years to record highs. But their measured thermometer data shows the exact opposite. The area of the United States reaching 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius sometime during the year has plummeted over the last century, and this year is currently a record low. Let's take a look at one example of the fraud being committed by NOAA. They show that 41.5% of the United States experienced unusually hot summer maximum temperatures in the year 2021. And they show that in 1931, only 23.8% of the United States experienced unusually hot summer afternoon temperatures. But NOAA's daily temperature data shows that the claims made by NOAA's Climate Extremes Index are the exact opposite of reality. In 1931, almost every state had temperatures over 100 degrees, and a large section of the country also reported temperatures over 110 degrees. But in 2021, very few locations in the eastern half of the United States reported temperatures over 100 degrees. The aerial extent of unusually hot summer afternoon temperatures in 2021 was much smaller than it was in 1931. But in NOAA's Climate Extremes Index, they show the exact opposite. And the way they're achieving this is by using NOAA's fake altered temperature data, which bears no resemblance to what was actually measured by thermometers. In 2014, Judith Curry asked NOAA about this alteration of the data they were making, and they responded by saying, their algorithm is working as designed. That is probably true. Their algorithm is designed to deceive the public about the United States climate. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on NOAA's climate fraud for the past 15 years. You can visit him, Kyrie Caesar, Toki Upla, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.